This is our Money Line special where we speak to captains of industry. Today it's the turn of Transnet Chief Brian Mulife. When you were growing up, I mean, you talked about um, having uh, your first job being the EDGEO, the ANC, and then obviously doing the training um, as a forex dealer and then going back into um, actual full, full time work in, in the public sector. Do, do you remember what you wanted to be when you grew, when you grew up? I think when I was very small, I'm recorded as having said that uh, I want to be a policeman or a soldier or something like that. I think all boys do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but later on as I was growing up, I realized that no, it looks like the police are not on our side. So uh, I changed, I ran away from that very quickly by before I was 10. Mm. Uh, and uh, um, I was taken to a commercial high school which left very little room for me to choose what I want to do. I mean, from from Form 1, mm. uh, which is grade uh, 8 now, uh, I, I went to a school that was teaching accountancy, uh, and in Form 2, economics was introduced, uh, even typing in the old typewriter, uh, business economics, uh, and subjects like those and uh, I did those right through my high school career. Do you remember when you first became politically aware of what was going on around you? Yeah, I remember vaguely there was an incident in uh, Atridville where a young boy from across the, the, the road from my grandmother's house was shot I think in 1977. Uh, his name was Patrick. Uh, still in my mind, I still remember his funeral quite vividly when uh, people carried his uh, coffin shoulder high singing about Azania and uh, how we're going to get back Azania and that uh, uh, very sad, very unpleasant things about uh, Jimmy Kruger and John Forster at the time. Mm. And, uh, and that got me thinking. And uh, yeah, and then from then on, uh, I became sort of aware. Uh, and then, of course, in 1981, there was that big debate about uh, the Freedom Charter and Azania. And then it became clearer to me because we thought that the ANC was fighting for Azania when I was like 12, 13. Yeah. And then, so, for some reason, somebody smuggled the Freedom Charter into the country, uh, back into the country around 1980, 81, when I was in Form 1. I remember that very clearly. Yeah. For the first time, we saw the Freedom Charter. We started, uh, <coughs> we started exchanging banned literature. Uh, I read um, Alan Payton's book, which was banned at the time, uh, Cry the Beloved Country. Mm. I still remember thinking, actually, it's not very political, uh, but it was banned and it was yeah. hot property. Uh, and uh, yeah, but it, it helped. Uh, and all those things helped at the time. Uh, really, when I was going into high school, uh, to start thinking about, uh, I wouldn't say politically, but becoming aware of my of environment what's around you. Oh. and what is happening. Okay, and then did you, and then when you went to do university, studying further, would, did you continue to be active? Oh no, when it what happened? went to university, it got a bit out of control. <laughs> 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 what? <Got out> of <laughs> became uh, <laughs> very active in uh, yeah. student politics uh, and um, studied very little. Uh, I finished my degree after 1993 uh, and I was just uh, moving around uh, uh, a member of uh, youth organizations as well as uh, student organizations uh, and that was more important for me at that time. Yeah. Uh, very little studying but a lot of reading of literature, uh, more serious literature than Cry the Beloved Country. Okay, and at the transition phase, um, how did you feel at that point that we're finally here, we've got these elections, we've got this new country that we've got built? Well, uh, we were working very hard in Limpopo from 90 to 93, um, building uh, ANC structures. I was a member of the provincial executive. Uh, in Limpopo, we called it the Regional Executive of the Northern Transvaal ANC and uh, building branches, zones and ANC structures. I got involved in uh, the development forums uh, which uh, uh, were supposed to 
get people talking about development issues and uh, how to uh, take uh, matters into your hands as far as development is concerned. Uh, but in '93, we were sent off to study in London, uh, economics uh, at uh, London University School of Oriental and African Studies. And uh, I, I shared the flat at the time with uh, the current governor of the Central Bank. Uh, a flat that had just been vacated by uh, Maria Ramos, who was also a student <laughs> there. And uh, uh, yes, and we worked uh, uh, in the ANC office in London as well, and uh, in Pentonville. Uh, and um, it was exciting. Uh, it was and exciting. you carried on with the, the, the commercial sub line of subjects. Did you, did oh, you yeah, I studied the economics. Crunching, yeah? I studied economics, postgraduate economics. And I came back, uh, trained as a forex dealer, uh, joined the DBSA. <clears throat> and then later on, when I was in the Treasury, I registered for a Master of Business Leadership with UNISA, which I completed. Uh, and, uh, and then I went to the PIC, in fact, shortly after completing the MBA. What's your vision for Transnet? <clears throat> what sort of company would you like to see in five years' time? I was listening to Jeff Immelt talk the other day. It was a, um, uh, uh, the uh, chief executive and chairman of uh, General Electric, and he said something very powerful. He says, "You go to sleep today as an industrial company, and you wake up tomorrow as a software company." Yeah. And so, uh, and the big question has been for us at Transnet: We are a transport, uh, heavy-duty transportation company today, we operate the ports, heavy equipment, trains, and the pipelines. But if we were to wake up tomorrow in a much more software-driven world, what we, would we wake up as? Uh, and I think for us is as a uh, developer of the software that is required to move goods faster rather than the operator of the heavy equipment. I think heavy equipment is going to be boring in a couple of years. Uh, uh, it will be the technological applications that are going to be exciting. So we see ourselves developing the new generation locomotives, the new generation port equipment, the new generation pipeline operations uh, of tomorrow. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very Peter. much. Yeah.